becoming the wave of the future. And the city of Boston is poised on the cutting edge of green policy and practice. So when BNN started planning the construction of its new media center, environmental impacts and meeting sustainable standards were key considerations. Well, I think going green is the thing to do. Um, you know, we all want to try to save as much uh, of the planet as we can. Um, and every little thing we do uh, helps. And so by going green in Eggleston, in this building, um, one helps this immediate uh, community, but also helps um, the mayor's initiative for citywide uh, efforts to, to go green. BNN began its green initiative by renovating the once dormant Orange Line power station in Eggleston Square and turning it into the Charles J. Beard II Media Center. From the beginning stages, the overall goals and objectives from the new media center were entwined with the general goals of green development. The building was built in 1909 just as a purely um, industrial area. Um, only housed four, four transformers along the way and that was it in the entire building and we put a television station into it. The renovation process began in 2006 after BNN teamed up with Community Development Corporation Urban Edge. The building itself was structurally sound but the interior required a lot of cleanup, some additional flooring and a new roof. The exterior of the building was restored back to its original. We added some, some additional window openings in, but basically essentially replaced all the windows, restored the two end windows, and um, installed new doors. Um, the inside was, for the most part, an empty shell, and we added in a floor, filled in the, the openings for the generators, and tried to um, put the program, the BNN program, within the building, but yet leave enough of the existing um, building interior visible and evident so that you, we, that you didn't lose that, um, that sort of understanding of the original structure. The, the largest environmental impact that any project has has to do with its location. Uh, and so the fact that this building is near existing infrastructure, uh, near public transit, and is an existing building and resource suggests that, um, suggests that just by reusing the building alone had the largest uh, positive env environmental impact than any other component. Along with maintaining 100% of the existing shell of the building and 50% of the interior space, most of the materials used during construction, such as drywall, concrete, rubber tile, and carpet, were made from post-consumer recycled content. Recycling continues in the building as all materials are broken into four types of waste and central trash storage areas are sized to accommodate recycling bins. Other specific green elements include high efficiency lighting that uses motion sensors to know when to turn the lights off and on, as well as the overall use of natural lighting that saves on electricity. Water efficiency is achieved through the use of low flow water consuming fixtures such as a dual flush toilet and the use of native drought resistant plants that eliminate the need for an irrigation system. The indoor environmental air quality is maintained through the use of low VOC paints, adhesives, and solvents along with carbon dioxide monitoring systems that ensure good ventilation. But perhaps the most notable green technology featured is the geothermal heating and cooling system that requires no gas consumption and 50% less electricity than a standard system. The most sexy technological component of it is the geothermal heating and cooling system. We drill holes down 1,500 feet into the ground, uh, which is actually right below the groundwater level. So there's a constant trickle of water coming into the system. It brings up the water, which at that level of the earth is at a constant temperature of between 55 to 60 degrees. So it's right at that perfect median level that when it gets up here, it takes very little power to either heat up that water or cool it down to circulate it throughout the building to heat up or cool down the, the building. 
and then it's replaced back into the, back into the ground uh, through a ser series of filters that we have as well so that we don't add any pollutants to the water we're putting back into the ground. There are, there are several benefits of having a green building. Uh, and they really, there are benefits at sort of every scale. So we recognize the sort of local and global impacts of, of real estate development, I would say. And, uh, and so when you think about the benefits, you think about them from the local perspective and the sort of global perspective. So if you're, a, if you're someone who, uh, if you're a producer and you work, you know, inside the building, or you're a full-time staff at BNN and you work inside the building, the fact that you work in a green building suggests studies show that you're actually going to be more productive because you work in a green building, and that's because you have a little bit more control over the lighting and the the air in your space. Um, it means that that because there's greater ventilation and air circulation. Um, that you just feel better about, about being there. And the fact that the, the flooring and the paint on the walls are non-toxic uh, make it just nicer to work there. With all of BNN's green technologies, the building has received Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEED, certification from the U.S. Green Building Council for meeting several of the criteria that achieves the silver level standard. A kind of current misconception um, about LEED and sustainable architecture these days is that um, what, constitutes a sustain what constitutes a sustainable building is a building that has you know, PV panels on the roof or um, you know, uses wind power or um, has some other sort of exotic but obvious kind of system for generating energy. LEED seems like this daunting task that a lot of people shy away from because they think it's too much for them to do. Mm -hmm. But it's really not. It's really actually pretty easy to do and it's, you see a lot of benefits from it that you see people being more interested in the building, mm -hmm. people wanting to see what you've done and, you know, the ability to educate the community as well is a big thing that, um, it, it's in keeping with our mission, but it's also in keeping with the mission of LEED as well, that you know, we are a green building, we are a green educational source. Through our channels and through our outreach to the community, we provide a vehicle for education that will lead to people knowing more about recycling, learning more about geothermal wells, learning more about these new technologies that they otherwise wouldn't be exposed to. Um, I think BNN is really in a unique um, is in unique position just by virtue of the work that they do to really broadcast um, all the the benefits of doing green building. We will do all that we can to uh, further uh, promote the green aspects of the building and to be greener than we are now as we go forward. From site selection to energy efficiency to sustainable materials and indoor air quality, this former power station was transformed into a beacon of sustainability for BNN to relay to the community. This was once a power station that offered um, electricity to power the orange line. Well now we're offering a new kind of power and we're calling that digital power.